ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah yuliju al-layla fi al-nahari wa yuliju al-nahara fi al-layl wa yukhriju al-hayya min al-mayyit wa yukhriju al-mayyit min al-hayy wa yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abdullah wa rasuluhu wa khaliluhu wa safiyuhu wa khiratuhu min khalqihi بلغ رسالة ربه وأقام الحجة على أمته فما ترك خيرا إلا دلها عليه ولا شرا إلا حذرها منه فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميمين وعلى التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في قران الكريم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يقول الله عز وجل في قران الكريم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاه ان الله مع الصابرين فاستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه فان الله مع الصابرين قال عليه الصلاه والسلام لا يؤمن احدكم حتى يحب لاخيه ما يحب لنفسه وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام اتق الله حيث ما كنت واتبع السيئه الحسنه تمهها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن my brothers my sisters primarily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us to the earth primarily to worship him alone. Wa ma khalaqatu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except so that they worship me. So this is the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created myself and yourselves. We come to this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us in groups and he has divided us into different nations different nationalities if you look at the verse i just read where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuha an-nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba actually not this verse but the verse where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says o people indeed يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم ان الله عليم خبير الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز ديد يا ايها الناس او بيبل انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى we have created you from the male and female وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا and we have divided you into tribes and nations so that you can know and interact with one another ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم ان الله عليم خبير indeed the most noble in the sight of allah from among you is the one who fears allah the most ان الله عليم خبير allah is aware and acquainted with what he do so primarily this is why we are in this world to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really make us steadfast If you look at the hadith I read also where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says or actually I would read the hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says qul amantu billahi thumma astaqim say I believe in Allah and be steadfast so as muslimin and muslimat we have to be steadfast upon our worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything in this life is temporary the hereafter is our priority when we die ultimately we shall be returning to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you plan your akhirah from this life how you spent your life here 
is what determines what you shall be or shall be awaiting you in the hereafter. So that is why we, we know we falter, we make mistakes, but we seek the forgiveness of Allah. And whatever mistake we make, we know Allah is Ghafur Rahim. Allah forgives all sins. So we are not perfect, we are not angels, we are not prophets, we are just worshippers or servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we make a mistake, we admit the mistakes we've made and we seek the forgiveness of Allah with hope and intention to become better people or better Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really grant us steadfastness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us good character and conduct. And we have made you into tribes and nations so that you can interact with one another. The interaction of a Muslim is indeed an interaction that is worth emulating. When you see a Muslim, a Muslim is supposed to be someone who people, when they see them, they would say, indeed, these are correct people, even if those are non-Muslims. You are not supposed to be good only to a Muslim. You are supposed to be good to a Muslim and non-Muslim. Allah says, Allah doesn't specify, you know, just Muslims for Muslims or Muslims for something else. It's we are all together in this life. And that is why we are either brothers and sisters in faith or brothers and sisters in humanity. If you are a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. You are my brother in faith. If I'm a Muslim and you are not, then you are my brother in humanity. I have to treat you well. I have to deal with you in a beautiful way. I have to respect you. If I hate you, if I act bad towards you or harsh towards you, then how do I want to inspire you so that one day you would find Islam to be a beautiful religion and then you would want to become a Muslim? You say, no, I don't like a non-Muslim. And then you, being a Muslim, are bad to the non-Muslim and then hoping that the non-Muslim becomes a Muslim when you are bad to him or her. How, how is that making sense? Subhanallah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really uh, to make us steadfast. Life is very simple. We are here temporarily. We will die one day and we shall be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we invest in our akhirah from this life. Whatever, in whatever way you can, reach out to people. You do your sadaqa jariya. You have this ongoing reward that continues to multiply even when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of people are oblivious about this. They don't give it value and they don't give it importance. And so when someone dies or passes away, then you see people running here and there trying to say, okay, this brother just died, this sister just died, let's build a masjid for her, let's build a well in her name, or let's do something. Whereas she had the whole time when she or he was alive, they didn't see that as something important. So that's why we are here. You know, the hadith says we are in this world as a, like a stranger. We just come and we go. We don't, this life is nothing. The hereafter is the most important. The hereafter is the eternal life. And we really ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Yes, there is different and several ways of getting Jannah. Definitely. Several ways, different ways. Something small you might do might be your reason or your path to enter Jannah. You may not know. But have hope in the mercy of Allah and walk towards it. Don't say, no, Allah is Ghafur Rahim, I'll do whatever I want, anytime I'll repent, and that's it. I know on that day, you know, some people say that they will do, you know, I'll do whatever I want here. If I get there, we'll sort things out. You know that kind of when you are confident about something and you think it's an easy, it's an easy thing. I won't prepare. If I go there, we'll sort out one or two things. Subhanallah, sort out one or two things. You are supposed to be preparing from here because it is very important. We are here to worship Allah and we shall return to Allah and we want paradise. If you want paradise, why don't you walk towards it? Don't say it's something that you will sort out. It's not some job or some dunya thing. It's the eternal life. So we have to be very steadfast and we have to ensure that we try our best to become 
better Muslims. The character and conduct of a Muslim is something that is very important. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked two things that takes a person to paradise, he said, "Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi." The consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa taala and your character and conduct. What type of character do you have? Do you fear Allah? Do you fear Allah in the proper way Allah is supposed to be feared? How do you fear Allah? Are you fearing Allah out of, you know, Allah can punish? You know, Allah has his punishment as well as his mercy? Or you fear Allah because you love Allah. Allah has brought you here to worship him. So you are fearing him out of not engaging in something that would bring about his anger or his wrath. When you love someone or when someone is beloved to you, do you want to do anything that would make them angry? Are you refusing to do something to make them angry because you fear them they are going to beat you up or you are trying to maintain your relationship with them? You are trying to maintain your relationship with them. So the same way we fear Allah, out of the love we have for Allah, He has made us, He has created us, He has made us in the best way, in the best possible way, and He has brought us here. And yes, not everyone has life going according to how they want. That is why life is nothing. It is temporary. You won't have everything you want here. Allah would test you, you would go through different types of tests. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will definitely test you. We will test you with a little bit of fear, and hunger, and loss of wealth, and lives, and thamarat and you know fruits from produce or bashiri sabreen but give glad tidings to those who are patient alladheena idha asabatuhum musiba qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un those whom when a disaster or a calamity befalls them or strikes they say indeed we we belong to allah and unto him is our return ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahma wa ulaika humul muhtadun those are the ones whom upon them are the blessings and the mercy of their Lord and they are the ones who are rightly guided. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us true Muslims, those who love Allah, those who love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who follow whatever Allah has said and whatever the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Allah says do, you do. Allah says don't do, you don't do. The Prophet says do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do. The Prophet says don't do, you don't do. Then you are a true Muslim. Yes, then you become a true Muslim. So indeed, we ask Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, to forgive us wherever we've sinned and to look at us with mercy and to open or guide us towards walking upon becoming better Muslims. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Yes, that is another thing that is very important. You know, sometimes when you sin and sin and sin, you begin to think you've sinned so much that Allah won't forgive you. You've seen so much that you don't deserve the mercy of Allah. You've seen so much that you don't deserve to be in the masjid. You've seen so much that when you pray to Allah, He won't answer you. It's not like that. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter how big or huge your sin is, Allah is waiting for you to seek His forgiveness and to engage in Tawbah. Allah is waiting for you. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَثُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ Say to my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, don't despair, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed Allah forgives sins and Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call out to me. I will answer you. So Allah is waiting for your call. So have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to really protect us, bless us, and guide us. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fiyima min al-ayati wal hikmah. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات من كل ذنب وخطيئة إن ربي كان غفورا رحيما الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في قرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله عليه بها أشرا اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بعدد من قعد وقام اللهم منصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم اللهم مخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا التباع وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرس والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرس والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كلها ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم أنت الشافي اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد من كل شر ووباء وبلاء اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد من كل شر وبلاء ووباء اللهم ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هليتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم ربنا لا تآخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وافعنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم ربنا هبلنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين واجعلنا للمتكين إماما 